business. We had our numbers before. I hope I didn't rub them out. Did I rub them out? I did. All we've left with is the last three of those numbers. What I was hoping someone would say, do you remember we classified that long series of numbers and we discovered what was their complexity? The complexity of the function that generated them. What was it? It was cubic. When I first showed you those numbers, it did increase quite rapidly at the end. What was I hoping someone would say? Exponential. That's what people always say. Oh, that's big. Oh, it's exponential. And um, like, not computing people, just normal people. How do they even know that word? I don't know, but that's what they say. <laughs> and I, I, it just happened to me on the weekend. I was doing something with someone. I was talking, oh, I was showing them the Harry Potter books. I said, oh, I showed the student how Harry Potter books grow in size. And I said, look, it's this really nice visual bar chart if you just lay the books down. And I laid the books down and showed them. And they said, oh, wow, that's exponential. <laughs> and I thought, People just say exponential to mean a rapidly growing function. I, well, let's be more precise. Let's not get exponential mixed up with cubic. Let's look at the difference between exponential and cubic. So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to talk just briefly about what exponential is. Well, what is exponential? Let's at least write the definition down. <coughs> exponential is something, pick your favorite number. 10. B. E. <laughs> uh, your favorite number to the value of n. That's exponential. The thing that's changing is the thing up the top. Notice how this is different to a polynomial. This is n raised to some constant, 2 or 3. Yeah, that's nothing compared to this. As n gets bigger, we add more zeros on. The number of zeros we end up with is n zeros. That's very fast growth. That's an exponential function. How, if I gave you a series of numbers, would you spot if they were exponential or not? Look at their rate of change, yeah. Look at the number of digits. A number of digits is a good way of spotting it because that'll be increasing at a constant rate. But the rate of change, who said that? He said, yeah. Okay. What someone suggested before we do to work out quadratics, that's actually the method I would use to spot an exponential, but I'm sure you can work out quadratics with it too. Um, what's the difference between successive terms? Let's look at 10 to the n and how it grows. n is 1, 2, 3, 4. What's 10 to the n? 10 to the 1 is 10. n squared is 1. 10 to the 2 is 100. 2 squared is 4. 10 to the 3 is 1,000. 3 squared is 9. 10 to the 4 is 10,000. 4 squared is 16. You can see these exponential goes much faster than uh, uh, a, a quadratic. What's the relationship between successive terms? Increases by, we can't do our differential table, we can't do our table of differences anymore, because the difference between these two is 90, and the difference between these two is 990, and the difference between these two is 9,990. There's no sort of, you know, amenable thing lurking there. There's a much more stable thing, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the ratio between them is the same. So if we divide one term by the next term, we should get a constant amount. So that's how I'd spot an exponential function. I'd divide successive terms by each other and look to see if it's a constant amount or even possibly increasing. Um, increasing means it's worse than exponential. So that's exponential. I thought I'd give you some examples of exponential just so you can understand how horrific it is. Why we shouldn't lightly, looking at a function, suddenly cry, oh, that's exponential. Because that's essentially, labeling something as exponential is like the worst thing you could say about it. Just let me give you a clue as how horrific it is for something to be exponential. The first uh, example I thought I'd give you is paper folding. Did you ever read when you were a little kid? I used to have the boys book of wonderful things for boys, not girls, sorry. It was an excellent book and it said things like the, the piece of paper, yeah, folding a piece of paper. You can't fold a piece of paper more than 10 times. What, what's that? You can follow, oh, Mythbusters have done this. God, oh, Mythbusters. But let's ignore that. In my head, I was Mythbusting going, oh, man, I could do it more than that. I could do that easy. I mean, are they pushing down really hard? And I thought it was something to do with foldability. I didn't understand the, what the limiting factor was here. And what is the limiting factor for someone that just wants to say it? What's that? The thickness of the paper. How thick is it after one fold? How thick is a piece of paper? How are we going to estimate a piece of paper's thickness? You guys, I've, I've told you to estimate big numbers. How can we estimate small numbers? Yes, take multiple instances of it. The reverse way of how we estimate big numbers. So let's say, oh, that's about, 
five mils. There, and how many pages is that? 240. Oh, no, this amount here. Oh, the whole thing's 240, is it? All right, that's about a fifth of it. So it's about a tenth of a mil per page. That's just a super guesstimate. So with no folds, we've got a tenth of a mil, 0 0.1 of a mil. With one fold, we get 0 0.2 of a mil. With two folds, we completely add... Notice what happens when you fold. This is the important thing to notice. When we do one fold, we get the whole of this side put on top of that side. Now when I do my second fold, it's going to look like this. Uh, uh, and then it goes, like, the whole of the first half is sort of added to the second. Can you see that? It's doubling in thickness. So 2 is going to be 0 0.4 mils. 3 is going to be 0 0.8 mils. What did Mythbusters find, by the way? They could do more. They could do more. They're so cool, those guys. They have, you have to have a, uh, the other problem is the length, of course. That's right, not just the thickness. After a while, you need a ridiculously long piece of paper. Because after every fold, the size of the paper halves and the thickness doubles. So the question is, how many halves, times can you halve something before it gets ridiculously small? If you want to end up with 10 centimetres and you're going to fold it, we well, say, 32 times, what's 2 to the 32? 4 billion. Yeah, a billion, say. So you're going to fold it 32 times, you're going to have a billion times thicknesses there. So if it's 10 centimetres long, the original piece of paper has to be a billion times 10 centimetres, that's point, 10 centimetres is point 0.1 of a metre, so that's 100 million metres. Or well, hang on, 100 million metres, that's 100 million metres, uh, uh, that's 100,000 kilometres. They had 100,000 kilometres of paper. How did they do that? Did they really fold it 32 times? No, they did. You can fold it the other way. But still, it's uh, okay. So it only had to be the square. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> Those guys are clever. They're very clever. Okay, let's suppose we're just folding it one way. We haven't thought of the other, the other way. That actually reminds me of a funny story. That when I was growing up, I used to read these books called Paddington Bear. Does anyone read the Paddington Bear books? They were awesomely good. Uh, it gave me a lifelong love of marmalade in theory. Whenever I eat marmalade, it's horrible. But whenever I don't eat it, I think, oh, yummy marmalade. <laughs> Uh, so Paddington Bear did this uh, awesomely good thing that he went on some intelligence quiz show, not intelligence, knowledge quiz show, and uh, this, he was up with some egghead professor. And the question they asked him was, if you have a plank of wood that's eight feet long and you cut it into eight segments, how long is each segment? And he said, eight foot. And they said, no. And he said, no, no, bears don't cut wood that way. <laughs> Very good. I love that. Uh, okay, so we go, uh, we fold it four times, we get 1.6 mils, um, five times. Well, if, if we're going to fold it um, 10 times, 2 to the 10 is 1,000, so it's going to be 1,000 times bigger than that, which is 100 centimetres. It's going to be a metre thick after 10 folds. Is that right? 2 to the 10 is 1,024. 2 to the 10 is 1,000. 1,000 times 0.1 is... Oh, millimetres, uh, oh, that's in millimetres, not centimetres. Thank you. So that's 100 millimetres, so it'll be 10 centimetres thick. Um, and if we fold it at 20 times, oh, well, let's not even make it 20. Fold it 11 times, it's 200 millimetres thick. It's 20 centimetres thick. Fold it 12 times, it's 40 centimetres thick. Fold it 13 times, it's 80 centimetres thick. Fold it 14 times, it's 1.6 metres thick. Did they really make it 1.6 metres thick? Yeah, if you heard They must have had very thin paper at the start, did they? Yeah, very, very, very thin. Paper. Very thin paper. If you halve the thinness when you start, you get one more fold for free, you know. The whole, I'm trying to show you the enormousness of the growth of exponential things. They just grow enormously quickly. They're quite horrendous. Um, uh, the next uh, example of uh, exponential growth is... Uh, uh, so exponential growth is anything where the number the next time is a constant amount, a constant multiple more than the, the number last time. So here the constant that we're doubling, that we're multiplying by each time is 2. But exponentialness doesn't have to come from multiplying by 2 each time. It could be multiplying by 10 each time, or it could just be multiplying by 1.1 each time. And that's compound interest. Has anyone heard of compound interest? Yep. The whole idea of compound interest is if you start off with... It's how to get more money. No. Is it? If you've got, what, are, what are interest rates at the moment? Does anyone know? What's that? Three percent. All right. Suppose three percent. 
I got a hundred dollars. How much do I have at the end of the year? <laughs> With three percent interest, three percent interest, I have one hundred and three dollars. Less bank fees, three dollars. <laughs> Yeah, no, no, it's not continuous interest. It's just payable once annually, payable annually. So it's no, don't suppose it's continuous interest. It's just not daily interest. It's just over the whole thing. So three percent yearly. So then, and how did I get that? Well, I got the hundred at the end of the year. Plus, I also had the interest, which was three percent times a hundred, which is a hundred plus three. Or if you wanted to do it algebraically, it's a hundred outside of one plus zero point three, or 100 times 1.03. And then the next year, if I got interest on that, not only am I getting interest on my original amount, but I'm getting interest on that interest. So it's 1.03 times the whole thing. And the year after that, I'll end up with 100 times 1.03 times 1.03 times 1.03. And essentially, after n years, I'll have 100 times 1.03 to the n. Now, for small values of n, that means nothing. But for big values of n, this just grows astonishingly quickly, astonishingly big. So that's compound interest. But then you have to, inflation is 4%, so you're losing money. Oh, yeah, yeah. Inflation also is uh, exponential, too. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But the real growth gap should be about 2% real, so you should still be getting 2% compound. OK. So that's exponentialness. Uh, and that's exponentialness where our rate of growth isn't doubling each time, it's only increasing by 3% each time. Here's one where it increases by f a factor of 5 each time. My daughter just got one of these stupid letters, said something like, Hi, Gwen, I just got this letter, the... Insert your favourite thing here, NASA, post office, Bill Gates, uh, has promised to give a ridiculous amount of money to some deserving cause if I forward this letter on to three other people. You know, insert your bits here. Kind of like or five other people. What's that? Kind of like YouTube. Copy and paste this letter if you don't want to die. In yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's insane. Though I did it and I didn't die, so it must work. <laughs> so, so the idea was, if you send it to one person, they send it to five people, they send it to five people. It's called a chain letter. It's absolutely um, out, it's stupid and outrageous and overloads a postal system. Uh, and amusingly, Australia Post decided, and you had to write on the letter uh, something like um, mail, cancer for kids or something, where the stamp should go. And our kind-hearted postman still delivered it, even though it didn't have a stamp, because a little girl had written on it in regally writing, cancer for kids, where the stamp should go. And he's obviously thought, oh, I'll let it go through. So my daughter was saying, the postman accepted it. This is proof that this is a real chain letter. I mean, this is a real letter. And so she wanted to forward five copies to her friends. And so I sat down and taught her about exponential growth, which she didn't want to know about, uh, being <laughs> only 10. Um, and I said, look, if you give it to five, and they give it to five, and they give it to five, and each of those give it to five, and each of those gives it to five, after just 10 iterations, how many letters are bouncing around? It's something like 10 or something. <laughs> it's an enormous number. Yes? Does everyone know chain letters? They grow explosively. Someone tried to make money out of chain letters once by something called a pyramid scheme. Has anyone heard of that? Yeah, pyramid schemes are wonderful, illegal in Australia, but people still manage to do them. Um, a pyramid scheme works like this. You say, uh, I'll send the letter to five people, and they all have to send me, um, they have to send me a dollar each, and then they write their name to the bottom of the list, and they send it to five people. And whenever you get a letter, you have to send a dollar to everyone whose name's on the list. And after the list has got ten names in it, you rub the bottom person off. So if your letter goes to five people, and that goes to five, and that goes to five, and that goes to five, and that actually spreads all the way out, so at ten levels deep, how many people are receiving the letter and forwarding you a dollar? What's ten levels deep at the last level? Five to the nine or five to the ten? Boundary cases can't quite work it out. What's five to the nine or five to the ten? Big number. Does anyone know what it is? Nine, seven, six, five, six, two, five. Rounded to the nearest multiple of ten? What's that? 10 million. So I'll get $10 million in the mail. So it's, it's a pretty cool scheme. And they send you a big letter explaining it and talking about the mass. And that's just from the last one. You also get uh, one fifth of that from the previous ones and one fifth of that from the previous ones. And it sounds fantastic. And it's just money for free. And everyone does it. So pyramid schemes of one sort or another, like um, selling stuff and commission schemes. And money what's that? People must be pretty stupid if they're sending money to a random name. That's what I read. 
Well, did you hear the other one? <laughs> yes. People were abusing PayPal. They were giving uh, a $10 free uh, balance in the account when you signed up. So they just <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, I won't repeat that one, but that is a very impressive thing. The PayPal uh, abuse of that. Okay, but does everyone see? The pyramid scheme seems ideal. You only have to send $10 out. You receive, clearly, something like $10 million plus the other bits. At least $10 million. How can it be that you spend $10 and you get $10 million? It seems too good to be true, but when you do the maths, it is true. So what's going on? People are greedy is, is certainly true. No, well, I don't think they're stupid. I think they're greedy. What's the problem? The bottom level gets done over when they can't send out any more. Yes. The problem is you very quickly run out of people. Before you get to the 10th layer, or before you get to the 20th layer, all the people in the world have been used up. Which actually once gave me a great idea for a science fiction story, that aliens come and invade Earth. You know, they always do it to do disgusting things to us, or to eat us, or to... But the motive is never really clear. Like, The Matrix, good movie, but it didn't really make sense why people were in bondage and slavery. Like, the motivation's missing. So I thought, give aliens a motivation. They come and take over Earth and subjugate us solely so they have new people to feed into a pyramid scheme they're caught in. <laughs> I think it'd be an awesome story. Uh, I've never written it. Okay. Uh, you, that's a new layer. What's that? The new layer, no, they'll have to invade lots of planets, and they'd have to get each planet to invade five planets or something. <laughs> you can, they could hook into the whole thing. <laughs> Okay, so you've seen all the exponential stuff. The last one I wanted to mention is Moore's Law. This general idea that the total computing power available in one machine doubles every two years approximately. So if you've got a machine that's two years old, it's now twice as fast as it used to be. <laughs> so when, Not really. So what this means is if you wait long enough, computing power doubles all the time, so computing power is growing exponentially. So in a sense, our ability to solve problems is growing exponentially. Unfortunately, it's a fairly slow exponential growth. Doubling every two years isn't. Well, that's, there is a constant. The software then gets klutzier to, to use all that. Moore's retracted the law. I don't think you can retract the law. <laughs> Very recently, he said oh, he doesn't think it's true anymore. It's not, yeah, he's still true, but not quite as much. So he's called it less law now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so here's a challenge that I want you to do, and then I'll show you one last thing, and then we're done. Oh, yeah, sorry. My challenge for you is this. Suppose you've got a problem, and you've written a program to solve it, and you've either used a logarithmic complexity function an, a square root complexity function, a linear function, an n log n function, an n squared function, an n cubed function, or an exponential function. What's the biggest value of n you can solve in a reasonable amount of time? What's a reasonable amount of time that you'd be prepared to have your computer running to solve a problem? A minute? A minute? OK, so for you, it's a minute. If you want to suppose you're trying to do something really cool, break something, or what, you could leave it running for a week? Pick some amount of time. Whatever reasonable means for you, shh, shh. whatever reasonable means for you, I don't mind if it's a day, a week, a minute, a year, whatever reasonable is, work out the biggest value of n you can solve in that reasonable amount of time. That is my challenge for you all to fill in. Now, admin points and then we're done. Um, no, I can tell you that later. No, I can tell you that later. Raw notes I've already told you about. Brownie points I can tell you later. So there is nothing to show you. Oh, except at the end of this course, you'll be a wizard of speed and time. You'll have mastered speed and time. And I did find a clip that showed this quite amazingly. So we might just finish with that. Wizardly tomorrow. I'll see you then. <laughs>